Umema, historically, we have heard a pretty good game about behavioral analytics. I got to assume that behavioral analytics is not that simplistic and that it is way more complicated. Am I right in that thinking? Yes and no. Okay. One thing a lot of folks don't realize unless they're in the weeds is just how bad the data is, honestly. So we got a problem with what we're collecting to tell us for behavioral analytics just is no good? I think there's definitely like a, an event cleanup problem to even be able to say, hey, is this person accessing something outside of business hours? Is that normal? You're right that that's a little simplistic, but it's actually quite a bit of signal at the end of the day because we're talking about access within organizations, which is pretty constrained ultimately. Um, but you're also right that once you have that foundation, you can start to correlate things and, 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 and look at patterns at a different level of depth or dimension. Give me an idea of something you've seen correlated that sort of, sort of enlighten you to another level of understanding of access. Oftentimes people don't look at velocity, how frequently somebody is requesting something and the sequence of things that maybe they would request before building up to, to, to stealing a credential or something like that. So not as simple as, oh, this is out of hours, but actually looking at the, the, the broader kind of landscape of like actions that take place that lead up to a sequence of attacks or something. What are you starting to understand about behavior and access that maybe you didn't understand a couple of years ago? As of today, we're not really doing much in in the area of behavioral analytics. We do ha certainly have quite a few um, alerts, but as you start looking at how behavioral analytics should work, you know, for instance, if somebody's commonly added to a domain administrator group because you're provisioning, then deprovisioning them to be able to do their work, and this person is in the IT organization, that shouldn't probably set off an alarm. But it should set off an alarm if the, there's a new employee. That person has never been a domain administrator before, and now suddenly they're made a domain administrator. And so I think there's a lot of low-hanging fruit. What I would love to see is sort of injecting behavioral analytics and possibly artificial intelligence at some point as a into the protective control and potentially using artificial intelligence to look directly at the JIRA tickets and even derive from that what the likely assets that somebody will need access to and provide them that authorization. Where is Opal in its use of AI today and where do you want to be tomorrow? Currently, what we're thinking through is how can we start to flag things for calibration? How can we start to flag things for recommendation and then allow humans to kind of make the judgment call on, oh, yes, definitely, let's let that go through. I think that's the first step to, to kind of reaching full trust. Umema thrives on this discussion. Reach out to Opal and learn more. Opal.dev.